Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to Podcast H2. My name's Bandrew, and this is a channel where I review stuff that's too dull and monotonous to review on the main channel. Today, I am testing out this guy. This is the SEBA USB sound card. Here's a quick view of what the USB sound card looks like. It is an all plastic build, but it does feel like pretty firm plastic, so I'm not worried about the build quality failing. When I plugged in my headphones to the USB sound card and compared the audio of my headphones plugged directly into my computer, I really didn't hear a difference. So if you're just going to be using and powering just over the counter, pretty standard basic headphones, I think you'll be fine with this adapter. And here's a quick view of the voltage test. You can see we're getting about four and a half volts going to the microphone when we plug directly into the sound card. Okay, now you can see that my sound preferences are opened up. You can see my microphone input gain is set at 14%, and the reason I'm able to set it so low is because the microphone's getting about four and a half volts, but I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet, set the volume at 0%, and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of background noise is generated by this sound card. Okay, now I have plugged the microphone into a phantom power supply and then the phantom power supply into the USB sound card. You can see in my sound preferences that I've been able to drop the microphone gain down to 2%. So this really helps eliminate any background noise because you're able to set the gain so low. You're really eliminating any background noise generated by the sound card. But let me go ahead and be quiet so you can hear what kind of background noise is generated at a 2% gain input. Now I have plugged in the Pile PD Mic 58 directly into the sound card using an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable. Um, my input gain is set at about 24%, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what a basic dynamic microphone sounds like through this sound card. And just a reminder, dynamic microphones do not require voltage to work, so adding a phantom power supply to the chain is not going to improve the audio of this microphone. So in all honesty, it's a decent sound card. The build quality is fine. And this is the only sound card that I've come across recently that provides around 4.5 volts to the microphone, which is plenty to power an electric condenser microphone like the Niwa NW800, which is what I'm using right now. But there does seem to be a little bit of digital noise in the background in the low gain areas around 25% and higher. So if you're worried about that, this may not be the best sound card for you. You can go with a new safe Sabrent USB sound card which provides 3 volts and then invest in a phantom power supply. That may be a better option. Or if you are on an extremely tight budget, this sound card may work well for you. You'll just have to keep your gain relatively low. Okay, so that will do it for this review. Um, if you found this useful, give me a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, thumbs down. If you want more of these very specific reviews, subscribe by clicking the logo in the corner. If you're interested in the sound card, I'll link that in the video description down below. Uh, if you want me to test any microphones out on this sound card or you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the main channel, which is just youtube.com slash podcastage, and I'll see you all later. Bye.